rise to our feet. You are the only true God. And this is eternal life that we may know you. And Jesus Christ whom we have sent. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place, for revealing yourself, for stepping down and honoring our meeting with your presence. It is all through your sovereign will, by your mercy and your grace. We are here now with our hands lifted up. We worship you. We honor you. We sanctify you in our hearts. Be blessed now and forever. Eternal one, immortal one who dwells in light and approachable. We bow before you. We honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we all said amen. While we're still on our feet. Let me just turn to Acts 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse number 25. Acts chapter number 3, verses number 25. I don't want to take time. I want us to welcome the apostle. I just want to read that portion of scripture. This is Apostle Peter preaching here. He says to the people of Israel who were at Jerusalem, after having seen the notable miracle of a man who was important from birth, who had suddenly been healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. While Peter preaching, he says to them, Ye are children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. If you notice that scripture, you will see that the covenant is in singular, but the fathers are in plural. He says you are children of the prophets, which is plural, and he says of the covenant, not covenants covenants of our father, the covenant of our fathers. The fathers are many, but the covenant is one. Meaning the covenant became a legacy. Abraham passed on the same covenant to Isaac. Isaac passed on the same covenant to Jacob. And Satan kept on introducing, trying to cut new covenants with them to take them away from the covenant. So every now and then, God will raise people in the midst of Israel, the likes of Elijah, to bring them back from covenant to covenant. Because though the fathers be many, but the covenant is one. So Jude says in Jude 1 verse 3, I had intended to write to you about the common salvation which we share, but I was pressed in my spirit to exhort you to contend for the faith which was once delivered, not a new one. The only new thing that God is doing now is to take us back to the original covenant of the fathers. So Peter was exhorting them here, saying, come back from covenants. Jeremiah 6, 16 says, stand in the crossroads and cry out, ask for that old path. Don't generate a new path. Ask for that old path. And when you find it, walk in it. You will find rest for your souls. He says, but the people said, we will not walk in that path. So God will raise every now and then, men, give them an ancient spirit to retrieve apostolic patterns and templates to help our generation, though we be many, but we build upon one foundation. It is that time and it is that season where God is bringing us back from covenants to one covenant. We are not sons of charlatans. We are sons of the prophets. 
ye are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which the Lord made with our fathers. I can say this boldly that God has raised a man for us not only in Africa but even beyond Africa who carries the original apostolic template for the church. As we stand on this crossroad tonight we are crying out Lord show us the old path. We want to walk in it. God has sent us one of his best, sent us his choicest servant in our midst, in the person of Apostle Arome Osai, whom we are going to welcome in a moment. But I want to honor all pastors, great all men of God who are here, Apostle Babum Tebu, greetings, Baba. All our seniors that are here, I greet you and welcome you all in Jesus' name. Amen. I would love for us with that in mind with a shout and a loud clap of hands to receive the Lord's servant, Apostle Arome Osai, as he mounts the podium. <laughs> Hallelujah. say hallelujah. Yeah. It's a great honor to be in Peter Marisburg. And when you find me in Peter Marisburg, I will be with Apostle S. Undolfo. <laughs> a man with a sweet spirit. A man with a great woman standing by his side. Yeah. And uh, we trust that through our combined labors, the kingdom of God in this land will be extended in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we give you praise tonight. We thank you. We exalt your name because you are God. Thank you for what you are doing in KZN. We trust you to set your foot on the land and that everything that is contrary to your glory will suffer loss in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for grace on all the ministers of the gospel laboring truthfully in the vineyard. Let this moment of our fellowship in be a moment of corporate promotion, a moment of increase, a moment of grace. Be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Turn your Bible with me quickly. We'll still continue from where we stopped yesterday. But... Uh, we will take an additional scripture to call us back to the service before we progress. And I will want to invite us to the book of Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. I want to invite us. And just in case your phone is not on silence, you are likely to constitute a distraction to this service. So I want to advise that if your phone doubles as your Bible, you may wish to put it on silence. Isaiah chapter 11, verse number 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its root. Please stay in verse 1. Stay in verse 1. Let us speak. Let us speak the uniqueness, the unique things that are captured in verse 1. 
If the anointing comes upon your child and the child cannot manage the excitement and expresses it through crying and tears, you are advised to take the child to a corner. There is a corner there so that the child's participation in the anointing will not constitute a hindrance to the rest of the people in the congregation. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Prophetic language is metaphoric. Prophetic language is, is idiomatic. So we have a few metaphors in this scripture I'd like us to take note of before we begin to make progress. The first metaphor that we have there is a rod. Second metaphor that we have is a stem. Third metaphor that we have is the branch. Fourth metaphor we have is the fruit. Is the what? Root. What is missing here? Because this is descriptive, the metaphor. The metaphor that was chosen for the unveiling of the mind of God as captured in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 is the metaphor of a tree. So the tree has roots. The tree has branches. The tree has a stem. And out of the tree, the rod came. So what is missing? In yeah, fruit. Only fruit is missing. That's why the next verse talks about fruit. Stay with me. There shall come a rod out of the stem of what? Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Then the next verse gives us the fruit that that tree will produce. Are you still with me? They are not with me. <laughs> hey. You know, normally, theologically, this is an easy theological route for a preacher to conclude that the items mentioned in verse 2 are the seven spirits of God. Hmm? It's an easy theological route, but that's not what it is. Go there. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. One spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. But it will manifest as the spirit of wisdom and understanding. This is, we're talking fruit here. Oh, you don't like. You are not following. The seven spirits of God is a different matter. It's not in this scripture. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying here are the fruits that the Spirit of God will produce in the a, in a life of a man that is compliant with the ways of the Spirit. So these are the fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Yes, that is, that is the investment. That is the spiritual capital. But it will manifest as the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. It will manifest as the Spirit of counsel and might. It will manifest as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Now, I would like you to see the, the partnerships. Wisdom is with understanding. Counsel is with might. Because before you can fight, you need might to fight. But before fighting, you need to secure counsel. Are you there? Hallelujah. The spirit of knowledge is with the fear of the Lord. Because if you don't enter into the economy of the fear of God, God will shut the door of spiritual knowledge to you. You know, how many of you still remember when David he sent, he cried out, and you know he grew up in Bethlehem, and he cried out and said, oh, that one will give me water out of the well of Bethlehem. It was a longing of his soul. That was what he said. It was not a command. But you see, David has been in the fortress. He had been in an hold for 13 years. 
and it takes five years to raise a man that is competent in the use of the sword, the shield, and the spear. It takes five years. And when David decided to move to the stronghold because his life was in danger, many people there be that began to join themselves to David. And these guys were with David for 13 years. They were training for battle for 13 years. And it takes only five years to make a legionnaire. So when David said, oh, that one will give me drink out of the, what, the wells of Bethlehem, these guys took it like a command because they were looking for an opportunity to test their skills. Those days, the well of Bethlehem was guarded by the Gerasim of the Philistines. And the word Gerasim is a military term, terminology that is the same with legion in the Greek. Gerasim is used for its Old Testament language. It's, uh, so you find legion in New Testament language, but it means the same thing. It means a, 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 a company of soldiers from 2,000 to 12,000. That was, that's what forms a garrison. And only three guys had the longing of David. The, the Bible called them mighty men. Are you there? And they decided to go against a garrison of at least 2,000 men. And you know that if, if, they, if, if they are going to get water back to David, at some point in the battle, one man will be down because he will be trying to use the instrument to get water. I'm just trying to paint a picture so that you understand the kind of battle that he was in. And they still brought the water back to David. How did they do it? I don't know. But they, that's why they end the title mighty. Now, when they brought the, the water to David, David began to operate in spiritual knowledge. He said... They gave him water. But he said, is this not the blood in the eyes of David by the analysis of spiritual knowledge? The value of that blood, was, of that water, was equivalent to blood at that time. You are not with me. He poured that water out as a libation. That is only the spirits that should take this kind of offering. If you don't have spiritual knowledge, you will drink it. But the value of what you are drinking is not water. It has been upgraded to blood because he took the blood of a man. A man jeopardized his life in order to bring it. Oh, you are not with me. Are you there? Without spiritual knowledge, you will do foolish things that will cripple you in the future and mortgage the destinies of your children. In order for you to enter into the economy of spiritual knowledge, the passcode is called what? Huh? You know, I am not convinced that you are here. That's why I brought this scripture. I brought this scripture as a means of bringing you back from where you are to where we stopped yesterday. He said the spirit of the Lord shall come upon him and that spirit of the Lord will manifest as the spirit of wisdom. It will be the spirit of wisdom and understanding in some vessels. That same spirit of the Lord. It will be the spirit of counsel and might in some vessels. It will be the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord in some vessels. Take note of these partnerships. Are you with me? So, you, God will not give you spiritual knowledge if he has not yet given you the spirit of the fear of the Lord. God will not give you might if he has not first given you counsel. God will not give you understanding if he has not given you. It is wisdom that opens the gate to understanding. Is wisdom, is the spirit of wisdom that opens the gate to understanding. Now, how many of you are here, you had a dream and you did not know the interpretation, even though you are, you are, you are a scholar? Or, I know some of, it means some of you, the moment the dream is coming, the interpretation follows instantly. You lie. Let me, let me give you an idea. 
Let me give you an idea. Okay. Because you lied, I will not give you an idea. Yeah. Okay. When you have labored in the wilderness for like two years, you will need the answer to, that I wanted to give you. You, you will go on fasting to look for it. Because I, to, I ask you a question, you say, oh, you know, we are, we are of the high breed, you know. When God discloses something, we know the meaning instantly. Okay, let me leave you. Go back to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, where we stopped yesterday. So let me ask again. How many of you have ever dreamt before and you did not know the meaning of what you dreamt? <laughs> All right, you can put. You had enough wisdom to go to the University of Johannesburg and study engineering and pass out with a degree. But you had a dream and you did not know the meaning. The reason is because the dream, that communication was given to you on a frequency that is beyond the civilization of your thought. That dream that you have is a proof that you have encountered the spirit of revelation because the dream disclosed something that is in another realm. That's the spirit of revelation. But in order for you to know the meaning, you will need the spirit of wisdom. It is wisdom that can crack the meaning of hard sentences. You are not with me? Okay. Do you realize that life throws questions at us? Whenever you are in a situation, even though you are educated, but you seem handicapped in solving that puzzle. Have you been there before? You have a university degree, you are, you, you are, in fact, you are a PhD holder, but you lack money. There's a financial matter that is on your hands. And the Scrudinger equation that you learned in physics cannot solve the mystery of money that is on your life at that time. What you need is the spirit of wisdom. Even though life seems to be natural, the utensils with which we prosecute life is supernatural. Yes, don't forget that. The, the utensils, which is go for campaigns, for trainings, they go for lectures in the night, sometimes for 16 years, so that they can dominate here. In the eyes of Jesus, natural life is supernatural. That's why he said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will what? Cast out them. It means you will have need to cast devils out. Even if you are working for the government in the office, there will be demonic people that will put things on the ground. You will have need to know how to dislodge devils, to expel demons from locations so that you can live a normal life. Mm. So you see, this normal life we are talking about is supernatural. It's already rigged. It's rigged already. So you will need to have supernatural appendages in order for you to prosecute natural life. And so in the Holy Ghost, we have expressions of the dimensions of the Holy Ghost that are highly spiritual, but they equip us for normal life. Are you still with me? They equip us for what? Oh, you are not with me. Go back there. Go back there. Um, Isaiah chapter 11. Give me verse 3. They equip us for normal life. Because you don't run, you do not prosecute normal life with normal things. Somebody that wants money, he goes to Johannesburg Business School to learn about money. To learn about how the all share index, how the current exchange rate, how the, um, the interest rates on loans and all those financial variables, how it plays out to either advance your cause or frustrate your advancement. So he's learning about letters and figures and numbers and percentages and decimals. And he comes out thinking he's equipped to engage the economic war front. Only for him to discover 
that the certificate that he got will eventually become a mockery because that economic war front is manipulated by spiritual people. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's to downplay education. They seed you so on the soil of your soul. They are, they are, in fact, uh, if you have developed your soul, it go, you'll be more of a resource in the hands of God than someone that has not. So you will see the impact of the education that Apostle Paul had. You will see it in his ministry. I'm saying you are, you are going to be resourceful because you have exercised your computers, your mind. But you see, the fact that you have exercised your mind doesn't give you an advantage. Someone that doesn't have as much mental capacity as you have can be ahead of you throughout your lifetime because he knows that life is, prof is prosecuted with spiritual utensils. Let me give you this scripture before we go back. Are you still with me? And shall make him the spirit of the Lord. Are you there? The spirit of the Lord that, uh, that manifests as the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of the Lord that manifests as the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of the Lord that manifests as the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the same spirit of the Lord. See, so those are fruit. The same spirit of the Lord will make you quick of understanding in what? Now you didn't get that. If your Bible has a lexicon, I would like you to click on quick the same spirit of the Lord that's what it's going to do to you it's, it's going to make you quick of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and when you have quick understanding in the fear of the Lord you will now have the capacity to judge not after the sight of your eyes and to reprove not after the hearing of your ears so my charge to you is to find out the Greek word, sorry, the Hebrew word translated quick in that scripture. Have you, have you checked it? What did they find? Oh, no one helping me to check. And I don't want to use my own because you will claim that I'm trying to. So you, you will deny me. So. I want someone in the congregation whose electronic Bible is equipped with a lexicon to read the Hebrew word that was translated quick. What? Ruach. What's the meaning of ruach? Check there, is there. The meaning is there. Is what? Yeah, that's one. Roak is the spirit of God. There's another meaning. Breathe. Broak means the breath of God. The breath of God. Are you following me? Please follow me. The breath of God. So, the Bible is saying that I will make him of quick understanding. I will make him of Ruach understanding. I will make him of understanding. That will be a result of Ruach. Did you get that? Okay. It means that if God decides to breathe in your spirit, to release breath into your spirit, it has the capacity to produce what? Understanding. I'm just teaching you spiritual life. That's what I'm teaching. Oh, you didn't get it. Okay, stay with me. This Ruach understanding, are you there? Ah, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. This Ruach understanding is a substitute for the judgment of your eyes. You, you didn't get it. 
Now, this Ruach understanding is a higher sense that should be trusted much more than your sight. This Ruach understanding is a spiritual sense that should be trusted much more than your hearing. What I'm saying is if you heard something and Ruach gives you understanding, despise what you heard because Ruach is superior to your hearing. It is a sense, but that sense is superior to your hearing. What you heard is a lie compared to what Ruach is bringing. Did you get it to that point? I, my message wants to change, but I'm fighting. What I'm doing now is I'm fighting inside. God wants to change my message, but I'm telling him reasons why we should remain where. <laughs> hey, Jesus. When Ruach comes upon you, it gives you a level of perception that is superior to the perception of your physical senses. The way the Sangoma knew that you are an enemy is not by storytelling. It's by the breath of a spirit that gave a certain understanding. You will be no match if all you have are letters. For the Bible says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So if you don't know Ruach, you don't know life, you're operating in your least capacity because that is what you are in your, in your flesh. In the flesh, you operate in your least capacity and in the spirit, you operate in your greatest capacity. You will need to make a decision that I want to be a spiritual man you don't know how vulnerable you are when your spiritual senses are out and you begin to operate from all your judgments are on the plane of the sight of your eyes. You know, I told you yesterday, if the only instrument of sight you have is your eyes, then you are blind. For the Bible says, why we look not on the things that are seen. In order for you to get ahead in life, you will need to have a means by which you can articulate things that cannot be seen. The things that cannot be seen are more concrete than the things that are seen. If your judgments, your knowledge, your strategy, your style is drawn from things that are seen, you are so disadvantaged and time will reveal it. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, in view of the above, my message has changed, so I don't need this, my diary. Uh, you know, I was fighting, but I have stopped fighting. Come with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, beginning from verse number 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, the first question I have to ask you is how many people came to visit Jesus that night? one person. But when he was addressing Jesus, he said, we know. So it means that he was sent by a clique of men, by a group of men. He was sent by a certain theological block in the Jewish ruling council. He was sent as a representative of the interest of certain fellows in the Sanhedrin. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. You, you realize that the reason why they knew he was a teacher come from God was not because of his teaching. The reason why they knew he was a teacher come from God was because of the miracles. 
Because the man that was speaking to Jesus was a teacher in his own right. Mm, we are all teachers. But we don't know where we are from. But we know where you, you are from. You are a teacher. Come from come. Because no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. You know, it's like as if those guys in the Sanhedrin have finally come to recognize that the ministry of Jesus was authentic and they didn't want to just recognize it in their heart. They sent a representative. But unfortunately, the representative came in the night. In the night. This is an accreditation exercise, but it happened in the night. Have you ever gone when the university board is trying to accredit a department and then they come 12 midnight? So it's a, it's a strange case. I was expecting Jesus to say, why didn't you come for my crusade and read out this citation? It would have brought credibility to my ministry. The people will now know that I am not in contradiction with the doctrine of our fathers. All right? I was expecting Jesus to come up and criticize the time that they came, but eventually accept the commendation and, uh, and then Jesus now goes. The way he goes is strange. Next verse. Jesus now goes and says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now my emphasis in this scripture even though there are many things there which we need to avoid so that we will not get lost in talking. My emphasis in this scripture is the word see, see, see. Because we are talking about Roak. Jesus said that the organic proof, the experiential proof that you are born again, this is Jesus. And I, I want to tell you about Jesus. Hmm? Because I've taken time to study the teachings of Jesus. First of all, one of the thing, unique things about the teachings of Jesus is that Jesus has a strange teaching aid. His teaching aid are parables. So when he wants to talk about a deep kingdom matter, he starts telling a story. And that story is a cluster of metaphors that hold the, the key to the understanding of the unseen realm. He's an object teacher. So if he wants to teach about building, which he did in the book of Matthew chapter 16, he will go to Caesarea Philippi where they were doing construction. Hmm? Are you there? Jesus will always avoid definitions. Always. Except one time. And that's John chapter 17. When he said, this is eternal life. You will never hear Jesus do that. He will always avoid giving a definition. He said, this is eternal life that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. He will avoid definitions. And the reason why he does that is because he doesn't want you to contemplate spiritual things and understand spiritual things on the frequency of mental accent. Because he had the opportunity to define what it meant to be born again here. Instead of him to define it, he gave us the experience of what it means to be born again. Are you there? So according to Jesus, the organic definition, the experiential definition of being born again is that your spiritual senses are activated. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I know you are not following me, so I need to use an example. Is this a Samsung phone? Yeah, okay, okay. It has Android. It's Android. Good. Because I don't know Apple. But I know this one. This phone has an Android op operating system. When Apostle bought this phone without inserting the SIM card, 
you can use the calculator. You can use the touch light. If you have music stored inside of the phone, you can play your music without, and it will become a radio without having a same, there are some things that can happen. You can enjoy some value from this phone without introducing a SIM card. Is that true? Well, the reason why you bought the phone is not because you needed a calculator. The reason why you bought the phone is not because you needed touch light. The reason why you bought the phone is not because you wanted a radio. You bought the phone because you wanted to communicate. All of that communication is not possible as long as there is no SIM card. Here we are, we have a phone, but the phone is dead to the network. The phone does not know the network. The phone cannot use the network. Is that clear? Then we introduce the SIM card. The moment we introduce the SIM card, and that's the aspect, that's, the phone has a container that can contain a SIM card. And the moment you introduce a SIM card, the phone can walk with the SIM card as if the SIM card was part of it. Are you there? But it's only the SIM card that has link to the GSM network. It can understand the algorithm. It can take advantage of the potential. And you can, it can make your phone a television. Your wife can be in Spain and you do a video call and you are saying, no, that makeup is not okay. It's not okay. Can you adjust that? <laughs> can you adjust that? Because you are taking advantage of the potential of the network through the SIM card. And it will not look as though it was it's the SIM card that is bringing that dimension. It will look like it's the phone because the SIM card is hidden. So, are you there? In the same way, before you gave your life to Christ, you could do some things. You could go to the University of Johannesburg and come out with a first class degree. You can address the press and tell them what you did to come up with your great success. You can be employed in the bank and you grow in ranks until you become the MD of the bank. Being a chartered accountant and having got three additional degrees and one PhD, you are competent to manage the bank. You know how money flows. Even the money that you want to hide so that the government cannot track. You know where to put it. And then the guys, the accountants and the auditors will come and they will strain their eyes with their glasses and they cannot find where you put it because you're a smart guy. But all of that that you are doing, you are doing from your soul. And that was how Adam was before he fell. He was a living soul. His consciousness was in the area of his soul. It's only things that are consistent with the plane of the soul that is conscious of. Any other thing that is captured in the kingdom of God, he is dead to it. He doesn't know that that realm exists. Until you introduce the Holy Ghost, who is the SIM card. Then, this person can now access, can now see another realm that he couldn't see before. So, in the eyes of Jesus, the experience of being born again is that you now have access to explore. You can sense the kingdom of God. You can, you can participate in it. It is like a new island has opened unto you. But you see, the extent to which we explore this new island is dependent on your willingness to yield to the potential of the Holy Ghost, who happens to be the spiritual capital that was brought into your spirit man. Your spirit man is a one-bedroom accommodation. Think about it. Are you with me? If you decide to continue just operating from your soul, the day you meet someone that is skilled in the realm of the spirit, especially in the negative supernatural, that person can hinder your life and you will not know what you are doing wrong. Because the person is using a utensil that the soul cannot detect. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we'll go gradually. You know, this is. Hey. Oh, this is Nigerian time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. Wait, then it's even worse. 
Let me check South African time. It has not entered my brain yet. Well, we're already here. So, let's do the business that brought us here. Are you, are you with me? Okay. So, now the SIM card has been introduced. It is possible, one of the possibilities that you can access is the mind of God. The mind of God is accessible. Meanwhile, prior to that time, there's nothing like the mind of God. It's your own mind. You are cut off from that vast possibility. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, bless, verse 3, blessed be the Lord and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, you see, in the realms of the divine supernatural, uh, there are places. The reason why the tongues you spoke yesterday is different from the ones you are speaking today is because you are speaking from a different place. So there is no stereotype spiritual activity. Uh, are you with me? There are vast islands in Christ Jesus. And the extent to which you explore will determine your capacity. A lot of us here have decided not to explore. And that's why your, the, uh, the, the level, your level of spiritual experience is limited. For instance, if you say that you want to be praying for 30 minutes every day, God will give you a life, a civilization that is consistent with your impute, 30 minutes impute. That's the level of the supernatural you've experienced. And you cannot exhaustively enjoy the provisions at that level. So if you want to stay there, there's enough grace for you to remain at that level. If you say you want to invest one hour prayer every day as your routine, you'll be given a civilization that is consistent to that investment. I, I saw all the cars you parked outside, and I took notice that they are not the same. The driving experience is not the same. But they are all cars. That's how you can make a choice to be on a certain level of civilization. Not because that's the best. It's just because that's what you can afford spiritually with your impute. You decide to... Uh, that's what you can afford. You are too busy, so you can't afford more than 30 minutes of impute. What God will do is that he will create a possibility that is consistent with 30 minutes of impute. And I'm telling you that the way you are today is the choice you have made. It's not because this is the best God can do. Mm. Mm. Ah, are you with me? So if somebody here now says, okay, I'm going to be going for three hours every day. In the first seven months, you will not think anything has changed. But after seven months, a new... A new range of spiritual experiences will begin to find expression because of the impute that you are making. But the Bible says that he that soweth into the flesh, he that soweth sparingly, shall also reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully, he shall also reap bountifully. Maybe you have an intention to be a man whose ministry is... is is reckoned for signs and wonders. It's a good desire. And there's enough resources in God to actualize your desire. But you see, it's no longer up to God on this matter. Oh, you are not fully Wait. Um, I think we have not finished with this phone. Because you are no longer understanding. So I need to... When, when I was using the phone to illustrate, you were understanding me very well. Now, this is an Android phone. If you want to get an application that will work on the Android platform, you need to go to Google Store. Right? When you get to Google Store, you see thousands of applications that can run on this platform, depending on what you want. When you find the application you're looking for, because the last one I was trying to get is an application that um, can read my notes. That is, I have an essay, I have a book I want to read, and I don't want to be reading it myself. I want the app to read it for me, right? So I just put it here, lie down, and then the book is reading itself to me. And then when I find an interesting part, I can stop it, 
copy that part, send it to another um, Word document file. Piam. That's what I want. And they have, there are about seven applications that can do that. Are you with me? So I go to Google Store, and I, they, they, I find the application I want, and I click on it, and I, I, I want to install it. Then it brings terms and conditions, which we don't all read. We, we, we thank God that that's not how the mark of the beast will be received. If not, all of us would have received it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then you click on it and you say, okay, yes, I accept the terms and conditions. I accept everything without reading. But then it begins to download. The moment you finish downloading, the application no longer belongs to Google. It belongs to you. So you don't go to Google to ask them for permission to use because it's already one with your phone. Did you get that? Good. So if you got that, you can get what I want to say next. The day you got filled with the Holy Ghost, it was a download from heaven. And when it downloaded into you, you can now decide to use that facility at will. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in my understanding also. The, 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 the gift... The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the only gift that the Holy Spirit gives you that you can operate at will. The other gifts of the Spirit will operate as the Spirit wills. The reason why God did that and the reason why Google did that is so that when you download it here, it's no longer up to Google to give you permission to use. It's up to you to decide when you want to use. So God allowed that investment to be downloaded into you. He has relieved himself of the responsibility of usage. The responsibility of usage is now yours. So if you decide that you want to use it two times a month, the civilization you will get will be consistent with your level of impute. Don't blame your pastor. You blame someone for your life. Your life is your design. That's what you want. How you are now is exactly what you are willing to afford. It's just like you went to a car shop you saw all the cars. They said, this is, this is 5 million rand. This is 2 million rand. This is 1 million rand. You look at everything. Else. In the light of my reality, I need the one of 900,000 rand. Payable in 80 years. Then they would press the calculator and say, okay, this is the, the, the interest that we are going to charge you per year. So eventually it's going to be this amount. But what they'll be taking from you every month is something that you can afford. So if we see you on the road, an apostle can do 220 kilometers per hour because of his engine, and your own can only do 100. Now, it is not God's fault. <laughs> it's a capacity matter. And the capacity that you chose it's not anybody's fault. That's what you could afford. But so, if you can only afford 25 minutes of engagement, it will produce 25 minutes reality. You will live on that level of civilization. So, have you understood what Jesus is saying? Ah, where are you? I'm still in John chapter 3. Why are you moving around? Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot perceive the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is there, but he's dead to the kingdom of God. So when that software, when the SIM card is inserted, you now become alive to the kingdom of God. Now, you see, that word see in the Greek is idol. An idol means to perceive by reason of senses. Now, let me, let me explain something before we go on. Because tonight is a night of practicals. It's not just a night of two. When you were nine months in your mother's womb, if we have doctors here, gynecologists, they can tell us, you already had eyes. Your eyes were fully developed. Your ears were fully developed. But unfortunately, the eyes were not meant for the womb, so they were not operational. It is when you were born 
that the eyes now struck light and then the perception of sight started registering. Jesus is saying, before your spirit was created with inbuilt spiritual senses, but you need to be born again before they will become relevant. Did you get that? So you have senses, spiritual senses. So in order for us to be alive to God, which is what I want to teach today, because we got stuck in, in Ruach, got stuck there. We couldn't escape, even though I just passed there to bring you back from the market, because some of you, your mind is still in the market, how somebody cheated you in the market, you are still thinking about it. So I had to bring a powerful scripture to attract your attention, to bring you to church, and then we got stuck there. So that's why we are coming to the book of John chapter 3. Are you with me? Now, um, before, as we go on, uh, I will need to take you to the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. This is the effort of Apostle John to educate us on some of the new realities that are bound toward us as Christians that have been regenerated in our spirit. He said, but ye have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. First question is, what is unction? We have an unction from the Holy One. It tells us that the source of the unction is the Holy One. The Holy One happens to be the same card, the Holy Ghost. Now the presence of the Holy Ghost in your human spirit gives rise to the presence of an unction. And it is by that unction that we know all things. So the unction, obviously, is a knowledge faculty. Stay with me. Don't worry about anything this night. Because we are with the Lord. Now, in order to shorten my message, because any time the Holy Ghost comes on me, I will stop preaching. In order to shorten it, which is my intention, you play something there. What I'm trying to do is to, uh, is to activate my own unction. The moment it's activated, I will stop preaching. That unction is a knowledge faculty. It's the instrument through which you can access spiritual knowledge. Are you, are you with me? And the Bible says that the moment the Holy One came to take residence in your, on your inside, it came with the potential of an unction. And it is through that unction that we know things without studying. We know things without reading. We know things without visiting libraries. We know things without attending lectures. We know them by the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost himself knows that you don't know how to live. He knows it. He knows that you want to live like a fallen man. And that is an error. It's erroneous. So when he comes into your, 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 your system, he, he launches an educational system so that he can begin to educate you on how to live properly because you don't know how to live. You would think you do. That's why, have you ever lost your peace before you did something and then you lost your peace? And the thing you did was not wrong. But So the Holy Ghost is saying you can't live like that. That expression of you is falling. It's not from me. So he will keep complaining and protesting. The reason is because you have an unction. That unction comes to enlighten you, to give you insight into the heavenly description of life. And it gives you all the much needed spiritual knowledge to equip you to engage life from the spiritual perspective, from another level, which is beyond the level of your soul. And what I'm trying to achieve here is to take you beyond your sight because Ruach, Ruach will bring another faculty of knowledge, another, facu another sense that is superior to sight. 
So if the two senses are operating, physical senses are operating, giving you information, and Ruach is operating, giving you another information. And the information that are coming from the two sources are contradictory. Forget about your sight, forget about your hearing, latch on to Ruach. It is superior, it is more accurate. Your physical senses are deceptive. And Jesus doesn't want us to operate with them when we are engaged in matters of destiny. Are you still with me? So he said, we have an unction. Please help me tell your neighbor you have an unction. He didn't say you're about to have an unction. He didn't say you had an unction. He says you have an unction. Are you still with me? Let me move you further before we start the real dance. You know, we are dressed in Zulu. Now we are going to this. There's some gymnastics that is involved here. Just like I saw. I didn't know my brother was capable of those kicks. In fact, I was releasing prayer that the Lord would just help him. Just help him. When he threw that kick, I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I will practice for one year. When I come back next year, then I will try. But not now. <laughs> I will go home. Go home and lock the door and try. If the angle begins to appreciate, then I can come in the open and attempt. And it's only once I will attempt. Mm, for one year. Every year is once. Hallelujah. Okay, come with me. Apostle Paul was trying to teach us in the book of Romans chapter 6. His effort in Romans chapter 5 is to explain the judicial aspects of the mix-ups that led to our liberty. And his effort in Romans chapter 6 is explaining our new creation realities. Things that we need to accept and update our thinking that that is how we are. Like this kind of statement now. Ye have an unction. If you didn't know you had it before, you need to renew your mind and upgrade your understanding to know that there is a knowledge faculty that was introduced into your system the, the, the moment the Holy Spirit took habitation in your spirit. Is that clear? Okay. So this man is trying to educate us on the new creation realities. And he takes us to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6. So you can begin with Romans chapter 6. This, my friend, this, your application, doesn't take so much time to bring the scriptures. So, let's not waste time. Eh? This is Paul attempting to do what we call give us an opportunity to renew our minds. Because the way you see yourself when you are an unbeliever and the way you see yourself as a believer, if it has not changed, then Satan is shortchanging you. So we will need an upgrade in order to understand the new context. Because the Bible calls our experience as new creations as the newness of life. If God calls it the newness of life, it means it is new and you don't know it. So you need to learn about this new thing in order for you to upgrade and function as a new creation. That's not automatic. The experience of a new creation is not automatic. In fact, some people will live like an old creation even though they are born again just because they did not experience the renewal of mind that is supposed to accompany your spiritual experience so that they will upgrade and do the things that the new creation is supposed to do in order to take advantage of the resources available and to operate at that level in reality. So don't just say, if any man be in Christ, a new creation, and you quote the scripture, and there's nothing new in your experience. Nothing new because your mind is not renewed. And Satan will do anything possible, even through dreams, through people's words. He will speak through people's vocal cords to, to ensure that your mind is not renewed, to accept your new reality. He, he uses circumstances, uses situations to preach to you. He even uses, this your spiritual senses. Sometimes Satan will speak through it. It's like a mast. 
Oh, they are done with you. Your spiritual senses, they are like a mast. Okay, you don't believe me. Uh, have you ever been tempted? Anybody here tempted before? You have. Okay. You know what temptation is? Satan uses your spiritual senses to speak to you. That's what it is. Mm. Are you are you still following? Okay, so once in a while, that's why your mind needs to be renewed with the word of God so that when Satan speaks. Because if Satan spoke to Jesus, he will speak to you. I hope you know you are no more powerful than Jesus. Satan even showed Jesus a vision. He took him in the spirit. So some of your dreams are not from God. Yeah. Yes. So he knows the gate of communication. Sometimes he uses your transmission station and he transmits his mind into your mind. Yes. He doesn't want you to ever come to the knowledge of the fact that you are a new creation. To upgrade your mind to accommodate that new possibility. He wants you to live in the falling range. And in that range is the chifter. He determines what happens. If your life is lived on the plane of the flesh, you must understand that what the flesh is to Satan is what the spirit is to God. God operates through your spirit. That's the conductor that transmits God. Satan operates through your flesh. And anytime you yield to the flesh, you produce Adam. Anytime you yield to the spirit, you produce Christ. So, as a new creation, you must accept that your real personality is not the personality that is revealed through your flesh. Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. You are not with me. You are not following me. You must accept part of the, the first item of mind renewal according to Paul in the book of Romans chapter 5 that you must come to terms with is that I am not Adam. I am not a descendant of Adam. I cannot look like Adam. And Adam is in the flesh. So I bring into captivity every walk of the flesh in my life. Yes, the flesh will wake up. The flesh will tell you, sleep with that lady now. That, can't you see how she is? Hey, no. Oh, but if you do that, if you yield, you will produce what Adam will produce. You will produce the falling. So the Bible says it's by the Spirit of God. We bring into death the desires of the flesh. So that we can close the door to the flesh completely. And we can now open the door of the Spirit. So that Christ we have a theater through us to manifest this scheme. The Bible says that the believers were first called Christians in Antioch. No, if you read it in the Greek, they were called little Christ. Because those guys have sealed up the flesh. They were taught, they were instructed properly. They've sealed up the flesh. They never allowed the flesh expression. It was only the spirit. And he that is in their spirit, even Christ Jesus, was the one that was manifesting. And each of them looked like each other. Each of them looked like Jesus. Each of them, they, no, no, they say, they say, this guy is a little Christ. They are little Christ. The believers were first called Christians. At Antioch. At Antioch. Little Christ. Little Christ. Where our will is surrendered. So it is his will what that we are doing. So if somebody is careful to read your life, he will see what Christ is doing in your vessel. In some, he can be a teacher that is instructive. Anytime he, he, he opens up, he, he is an instructive teacher. In some, he's a warrior. Yes, 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 the texture. Oh my God. Oh my God. In my vessel, he fights. Oh, if you have somebody you want to bring down, eh? that's my job. I have the utensils. I have, I have the weapons. Oh, I'm stronger on my knees than I am on the pulpit. If I bless you on the pulpit, you don't have any idea of how I can mount up when I'm on my knees. In me, he fights. So there are aspects of him that will be manifested through each believer. And when we come together like this, then we have the full armor of God. There's nothing we cannot bring down, brother. 
If you don't know that, it means your mind is not renewed. And Satan is, is, is shortchanging you, taking advantage of you. He wants you to maintain an old perspective. So the first thing that we must renew to accommodate is that your life is not in the flesh. Your life is in the spirit. For Paul says, for me to live is what? Christ. Giving expression to Christ is what living is for the new creation. As I'm teaching, as I'm teaching, as I'm teaching, at some point, the Holy Ghost will begin to manifest. But don't be distracted. Even if it's your neighbor, stay with the teaching. Stay, stay. Huh? Living according to New Testament description is allowing Christ's expression. For me to live is Christ. And if you have lived Christ, death for you eventually will not be lost. not be lost. The man that we have lost is the man that was not able to leave Christ. So we don't know the story that God is telling through him. Because your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. In the life of David, it was the story of the compatibility between worship and warfare. The partnership between what we worship and warfare. That in the days of warfare, those days are the days of worship. That was the story he told through the line of David. What is the story that God is telling through your own life? If the story is not clear, it means you live more in the flesh than you live in the spirit. And that's why it is difficult to discern the story that God is telling. Satan will want you to be limited to the flesh. Jesus Christ. You need to fight as a believer. That the flesh should not be my description. I will not be a slave of his desires. I will not be kept in captivity by the desires that come. And, 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 and you will, the desires will still be there. You will still see women are like them. Hey, this one is from Kenya. This is how they look. Huh? You will still like them. But you know what? By the spirit, we shut down. We paralyze the desires of the flesh. If you, if you decide not to give it attention, it will wither. It's strength of impression. It will wither. You will know it doesn't have a foundation. Just give it time. It will become a mirage. You will know it doesn't have roots. What has roots is the spirit. And that's why encounters can be tangible. And they can live with you for 25 years. Because that's where your foundation is. That's who is your foundation that is speaking. It's your root that is speaking. Mm. I was, I was, I was dancing in my hotel room today, and there was no music, but the music was coming from inside. Is an in a Oh, is an in a colleague, If you go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 11, you will see Lucifer. Of all the angels that were created, there is only one angel in the entire Bible. And I speak from a researched opinion. Only one angel in the entire Bible is called the anointed cherub. In the realm of the angelic, this angel was number one 
in rank. In fact, the Bible called him the guardian cherub. He was like a bodyguard for God. He is the only anointed cherub, but he is one among the guardian cherubs. So there are two guardian cherubs. Just to remember the portrait of the Holy of Holies, you will see two cherubims. Like one is like this, then the other one is like this. Just to remember. You remember that? One of them is Lucifer, the guardian cherub. He protects the glory of God. Are you there? You are not there. I hope you know the high priest is going to come into that place. And if the high priest sees that glory, the high priest will die. So the guardian cherub needs to protect the high priest from the glory so that he can stand before Jehovah and minister. Do you still remember that man? Is there the cherub? Because anytime you hear of cherubims, they protect the glory of God. If you hear seraphims, they protect the holiness of God. They are always around holy. They are jealous for God's holiness. The cherubs in the glory of God can unveil their face like this. You will see their faces. But the seraphs, in the holy, in the fullness of holiness, the identity must be concealed. So they have two, six wings, but they don't use all of them for flying. They use two to cover their faces. They use two to cover their feet. And they use only two to fly. I've, I've seen them only once. I've seen them once. I saw cherubs a cherubim once when we went to Jerusalem. We, we had five buses from Nigeria and I was a pastor of my bus. If they appoint you either a reverend father, a reverend with a collar so they can appoint you to be the bus captain. So I was the captain of my bus. Because of that, I was entitled to a big room. All right? Very big room. And I was entitled to fruits, a basket of fruits and so many privileges because I was the pastor of 50 people on that pilgrimage. Then one of the government officials was on my bus and we were supposed to be two per room because there were only 25 rooms to be allocated to my bus. When we got there, he said it's a government official, they cannot share a room with anybody. So the guy that was left, I now called him, gave him my bed. I said, you sleep on my bed, I will sleep on the floor. While I slept on the floor, a cherubim came to me in, in, in Jerusalem. If I am saying the truth, I will ask the God of heaven. If, I'm saying, if what I'm saying is true, I'm going to ask the God of heaven. In the next, maybe, aish, to send us one this night. To send us just, just one. <laughs>
no preacher can preach again. Because once the cherubs begin to flap their wings, the presence of God begins to intensify. Ha 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 Kibolantoria, Mexico Bramina Siko, the Gobabaito Samalite, Ikamedo Kela, Hidro Boko Santoria.
presence of God that is here, we can have miracles now. We can have miracles. You know, I said, what you experience will be determined by your level of investment. If you begin to invest more, you begin to experience more. Your life will no longer be like the life of the average Christian. No, no, you will go beyond that. You go to the exceptional level. <laughs> you see, encounters are taking place. Just, just, no prayers yet. No prayers. We're just drinking something. And some people are already getting delivered. All kinds of things are already taking place. Oh. It, it's intensifying. It's intensifying. It's intensifying. It's intensifying. So when your spirit begins to drink the presence of God, it will feel like you're having ventilation inside. You will forget that you have troubles. You forget that you have problems. Because your spirit man is being revitalized. If you continue investing in your spirit man like that, the influence of your spirit man will grow and it will swallow up those problems. God solves our problems from inside out. Now, deliverance is taking place. We are not praying for people. All of that is in the presence of God, just in the presence. If we, if even without prayer, if I continue here like this without prayer, this thing that is that has come, it will be increasing in capacity. It will be increasing. It will be increasing. A time we come, some people will start prophesying. Just here, just, no prayer yet. Kuba <laughs> Salemoko. The Lord will increase your greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you can see what we are talking about here is not the greatness of a preacher, it is the greatness of our God and all of us have this God, all of us. But whether or not it will be great in your vessel will be dependent on how renewed your mind is. Can we pray one prayer point before I begin to pray for miracles? Can we ask that the Lord will make us more sensitive to His Spirit? What you are looking for is not lost. Can we ask Him for sensitivity? That He might activate the unction. Cry to Him. I don't want to live like Adam. I want to live from the fountain that has been unlocked from my spirit. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My life is running on the platform of greatness. The one that energizes me, my driving force, is greater than the prince that is in the world. So I cannot be subdued. I cannot be bent over. Because there is spiritual capital in my spirit that enables me, that energizes me. Call them on Sikopresco for light. 
Kabe Banse La Braska Da Bobo Ramas Igo Mandeli Zeli Gumbri Kababo Sakande Risco Belanatis Abre Mondele Jima Cabresco de Bacadalia Abra Macatando Sico Bre Sosa Neta Iga Mantadia Isco Bregede Raka Bantoseca Ico Bre Baratala Isco Bre Sosanande Isco Macade Bomboria Abresco de Masatala Ica Branta Baboria Askedo Bonda Ica Mamantala Esoseli Eca Bresco Velamena Ica Branta Baboke Babena Hante Iscoses and Natalia Abremina Abranta Babose Abranta Babacatala Ico Sabena Kunde Abraica Bamase Acaboses and Ainde Ica Bresco Pela Mantalia Aselico Babua Ica Babanta Cancelate Ica Bresco Cantelia, Iso Saite, Macatoke Bala, Ico Braisa, Acante Bonde, Acadesco Bababunda, Ica Brelia Tete, Acaiso Mandeli, Helabo Sando, Helabo Seca Bande Baia, Asala. A capa bonta mercy, a castatonia, a brante capa benacada, the somina tedolia, a brando cote, is capa batonalia, a cabe bondola, aria sema cateria, alabo. Kopesi, kopa bela kiate, kopa bantolia, kopa sanda, abaita kebako, abuska deme. if we continue you will lose all sense of time then you when you recover yourself say, because you were sucked into the spirit and in that place time means nothing I want to pray for the sick right now so that God will begin to do miracles just attempting to introduce us to a realm I believe when we come next year, we will, do, we will not be in a hurry. We'll do Friday, Saturday, Saturday morning, Saturday evening, Sunday. So we'll have time to travel. On the last night, which is Saturday night, I will take you somewhere, then I will leave you there. Yes, yes. If you find your way from there, you find your way home. So it's in the hands of God. If we can explain everything, then God is not involved. Things that cannot be explained. 
I saw in the spirit the Lord was giving someone oh my God giving someone the gift of prophecy I saw it I saw the golden trumpet The gift of prophecy has been given to someone in the congregation. Once and again, the Lord will seize your vocal cord. He will seize your vocal cord and use your vocal cord to communicate his mind. See, my man, the Koseba. If I say in the name of Jesus, give me a loud amen. We'll do it seven times so that we can minister to the territory. And anything that is planted in this land that God has not planted, as we shout amen, the things will be coming out of the ground. So let's, let's test it. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus! 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 Father, tonight, I bind every sickness. I bind every disease. I bind every pain. I break every curse. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I bind every blinding spirit. Blinding spirit be bound in Jesus name. I bind every pain. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that doesn't allow people sleep in the night, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Deafening spirits be bound in the name of Jesus. I bind every growth, every cancer, every fibroid every tumor I say dissolve 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 in the name of Jesus Christ I break every blood condition from HIV hepatitis B anything that lingers on the blood I destroy you in the name of Jesus Christ 
I command pains to begin to go. I command bones to join together. Bone to bone. As I bind the spirit of paralysis in the name of Jesus Christ. Eye diseases jump out in the name of Jesus. Someone had an accident and uh, you had an injury around the spinal area and there's been this consistent pain. The hand of Jesus comes on that spinal cord right now. A creative miracle is taking place now. Let the spinal cord be mended and let the pain fly away in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. All right, so healings have begun. It will continue for, it will continue even when we, there's someone's eyes that has been healed that I see. And the person that had that pain on the spinal cord, you can look for it. A woman in this place has not been able to sleep for some time. And even if you get to sleep and you hear a little noise, you wake up and you cannot go back to sleep. It's, um, it's a demonic activity. A little demon that has been assigned to bring you unrest. But the yoke breaks. This night you will sleep and they will need to wake you up this night. I see someone that is, wasn't able to bend down. So I challenge you to bend now. Because the rope that was held on your waist has been removed. So if you can, you can try bending. Try bending. You will see what I'm talking about. You will see what I'm talking about. So when you confirm that what you came in here, you've been delivered from it, you come and stand this way. So while we wait for you, we will spend 15 minutes for deliverance. We will start the deliverance service. It will last for 15 minutes because of time. So if you, if you, if you check and you know that there is a miracle, you come here. Okay? We are going to do a deliverance service for 15 minutes. I saw in the spirit and I saw someone and your bondage was tied to a river. The bondage that you have been carrying tied to a river. The Lord will stretch forth his hand and he will identify those people. There are about three of you here. I saw that your bondages are tied to the venerations that were done in a certain river. And the spirit that is a guardian of that river has been following three of you around. As I will pray and the Lord will identify you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back, those ones whose bondages are tied to a river, I ask that you identify them by a touch of the anointing. A touch of the anointing, a touch of the anointing, a touch of the anointing, a touch of the anointing. Holy Ghost! Ushers, when you find them, bring them. There are three. There are three of them. So that we can conduct the deliverance. When you find them, you bring them. I command that spirit, that spirit from the river, contending for your soul, contending for your health, shutting the door to your marriage. That spirit tonight, I arrest it. 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 Be gone in the name of Jesus. Today, I have seen the thief that has plundered. That has taken his remaining one person. Father, in the name of Jesus, anywhere that one is, by a touch of the anointing, by a touch of the anointing, by a touch of the anointing, identify, identify, 
identify identify i identify identify in the name of jesus any place where your umbilical cord was buried as a means of transacting with the spirits of the water in the name of jesus christ and take authority over those demons of the water i come in the name of jesus christ with the authority of his kingdom and i break your power i break your power i release your womb i release your marriage and every legal union in the spirit that you have suffered from today i break that union Ooh. is it not written that when a thief is caught he shall restore sevenfold he shall give all the substance of his house father in the name of jesus christ i ask tonight for a restoration oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god Now is Sister Rose Rose from UN. Where are you? From African Union. Did she make it to this place? If you are here. Ah. So because I will not see you at the end of the service, come now. There's a woman here, your husband is a victim of witchcraft attack. He suddenly changed. He suddenly changed and for the past three years, you've been weeping. You lost your peace. The home is in shambles. Where's that woman? Come. It's not your fault. We can, we can liberate you. We liberate you in the name of Jesus. Bring her, bring her. We liberate you. And any spell that was casted on that man tonight in this holy place, we break the yoke. Why are you here? My husband for three years he just started changing. Yeah. So it's witchcraft. I saw it in the spirit. I'm going to do something. Oh my God. I have authority from Jesus to do it. The person that tied your husband, if he's still alive, your husband will never be free. Are you aware of that? You are aware? Yeah. <laughs> so we want to release him now want to release him. I have authority from Jesus to do that. Those men that have been kept in captivity, I loosen them from the yoke. From the bondage, from the darkness. So, in the name of Jesus, I command the yoke on your husband to break. Let the hold of darkness on him 
be cut off now. <laughs> Come forth from the hiding place. Come forth from the prison house. Why are you here? Your husband. <laughs> For your own case, I see that they buried something. <laughs> they buried something in the ground. <laughs> so we spoil that witchcraft. We spoil that witchcraft. We spoil it. We spoil it. He will come back in his right mind. Doesn't matter how long you've wandered, how far you've gone. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. In the name of Jesus. So he will come back. He will come back. So those spirits of the water will take authority over you. We take authority over you. So I will touch you just here on your forehead, just very little. So we'll call you forth. Father, I call them. I call them. I call them forth. Let the chains be broken. Let the yoke be lifted. I call you forth. Come forth. Come from where you were kept, from where you were put in bondage, from the prison house. Come forth! Yes, you are out. You are out. Come for me. Come for me. Say one thing you want, Sister Rose. One thing, just one thing. Tell, tell the Lord. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. If I tell you, you will not believe. Somebody here is dead. Somebody here is dead. You know, I know you will not believe. They have concluded the person's death in the coven. I think last night or so, last night, last night. Father, in the name of Jesus, that one whose death has been concluded by a touch of the anointing, identify that individual from my left hand side to my right hand side to the back of the hall. Yes, bring the person. You don't come to the house of God to die. The only merchandise that we have here is life. So death cannot survive the atmosphere of his presence. Hey, hey. Mm. I am on a now listen to me, listen to me. Somebody's womb was shot. Let me, I, I'm seeing a story here. There's a story. Yeah. Okay, let's bring this one from the dead first. Come out of the grave. Yes. We bring you out of the grave. Out of the grave. Out of the grave. Out of the grave. Oh my God. Come out. Yeah, 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 yeah
So someone took a goat, took a hen, took some other food stuff to a sangom with a prayer that the womb of a woman should be shut. And her womb was shut. And that woman is here. And the Lord has given me charge to open your womb. The woman I'm speaking about, your womb will become hot. Your womb, it will become hot. Osha, you will find the person. The womb will be so uncontrollably hot. Ushers, look for this woman for me. The heat is already coming into that womb. It will make her restless. Look for her. If that sign is not sufficient, I will give you another one. I am sent to that woman. Jehovah says he has heard the voice of your cry. Jehovah says he has heard the voice of your lamentation. Jehovah says your days of mourning are over. And he has requested that I hold your hand and bring you out of the dungeon. For tonight is your day of deliverance. Grace is poured upon your vessel. Grace is released. I bless you. Rise up, O oh woman. I'm sent to you. Rise up. What do you mean I sent to me? The first thing I decree tonight is that that offering the Sangoma received will be the last offering he or she will ever receive. That's the food. It's not the Lord that said that it's me. That offering. You will not be opportune to receive another one again. So I will touch you like this. Three times, I'm to touch you three times. Okay, so the Lord will begin to walk now. Weep not, weep not, weep not. 
Go. Sister, give me your hand. Your one has been solved already. You will rejoice. Don't worry. You will rejoice. Huh? Go. Let the womb be open. Let the womb be open. Let it be open. Let it be open. Let it be open. Let it be open. I break the chains. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, let it be open. Let it be open. Okay. Come. I am Yes, go. My love be now. She could be Light from heaven. Let every aspect of your life that the devil has controlled before today be recovered. Be recovered. Be recovered. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. In the name of Jesus. Go in this thy mind. Sister, shake my hand. Is it possible? Yeah, just leave it. Yeah. You will rejoice. So I want to see that person that had an injury and you had pain on your spinal cord and the pain is no more. I want to see that person if the person is in this congregation. <laughs> If the person is in this congregation, I want to see you. What happened to you? I, uh, I had a car accident and I was hit by my spinal cord. And it's been three years. The pain has been unbearable, unstopping, but today I'm healed. Hey, I'm on the a great thing was about to come in your life. The wicked people that were monitoring your life saw it and they wanted to cut you. But the Lord sent an angel and he protected you. So now I give you that which was to come for which the enemy began to fight you. Hey, 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 hey. I'm seeing so many things, but they are faster than I can say. So, oh, shh. So the light came from heaven and it hit here. So I will just do my hand like this. The people involved will be affected. The people involved will be affected. The people involved, they'll be affected. The people involved will be affected. Oh, it's coming. It's, it's intense now. The people involved will be affected. People involved. Will be the limitation on your life is being removed. Being removed. It's been 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 removed. And the hand of God even comes stronger. It comes even stronger. Comes even stronger. The limitation. Hey, 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 hey. 
Apostle, this gentleman here came with a testimony. He was involved in a motor uh, bike accident. His spine was ruptured. Doctors told him his pain is inevitable and he's going to live on epidural injections for the pain. But today he has been completely healed. He just does not feel the pain anymore. Monarch, we give you glory, we give you praise. Thank you, thank you. And I beheld in the spirit. Come, are you aware this is your season? Yeah, <laughs> it's your season. I saw the angel give you diamond. So if you are into business, you will see the kind of prosperity. Yes. He said you are innocent. That's why he's giving you. Yes, you are innocent. He gives you diamonds. Sometimes I see when God wants to prosper people, sometimes he gives silver, so I know what it means. Sometimes he gives gold. It's only a few times he gives diamond. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, what happened to you? Hey, hey, hey. This gentleman apostle he has come with a testimony as well. He was also involved in a car accident. He was paralyzed from the, from the waist down. downwards. He recovered, but he has been experiencing crucial pains. He on that spot. Yeah. I was standing, uh, uh, I was uh, diagnosed with epilepsy okay. in, in 2014. And then in 2016, as I was standing, my back just broke. It just broke. And then ever since then, I had walking problem and standing problems, and I couldn't work properly. But now, when I tested my back, the pain was gone. Come here, come Uh, 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 uh,
So look at the lines. If you feel pain, let me know. So that epilepsy will not come again. If you feel pain, let me know. I, I don't want you to go back with that problem. You still feel it? Okay. Just tell me if you still feel it. Yes, what happened to you? This gentleman, Apostle, uh, was under a very heavy wave of witchcraft. He would wake up at night, take all his clothes and throw them in the rivers. He'll be hearing voices leading, them to, leading him to rivers, to mountains, strange places. Recently, last month, he, took, he woke up and started sleepwalking at night and he threw himself in a 200 meter wide dam. But now he believes to be delivered. So, he's, he was a victim of the spirits of the river. So, there's one way we will know if they have all left it because there's one way. He's free. I want to pray a prayer for the congregation. But there's something I'm missing. Don't go. Stand here. Huh? There's something I'm missing. So you will help me. Let's pray in tongues for two minutes. Then I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Just two minutes, two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. Bilago seti. Escobre mamantalia. Risco fala mo seti abonde. Coprisco fala batalia plante kuska. Okay, okay, okay. There's a wizard that has been doing incantations against this church. I want to bring him down this night. Father, no one fights light. And because this one has turned himself against light, by light I judge him. I judge you. I judge you. Fall in the name of Jesus. Okay, before we do the final prayer, just if you can't sit, I have an announcement to make. Come. Come. So, now listen, there's somebody here, you are close to me, huh? Um, you are in a very intense spiritual fight. So I came to join forces with you. So um, in the next 17 seconds, 
God will stretch forth his hand and touch you by his anointing. Then I will know that you are the one. Father, help me find this person. Stretch forth your hand. Yeah. In a day. In a day. The witches will overwhelm you if I don't support you. Bring her. Bring and, and bring the brother. They've already taken her name to a sangoma that has a superior altar than the energy she generates from her spirit. Bring them. Bring, bring that one too. They have already been tired for the slaughter. It's my assignment in the capacity of a prophet to to fight with you so that you can be set at liberty. You will see, you will see growth now. You will see it now. This growth you have seen was with resistance. The one you will have now is without resistance. So fly, mount up. Mount up with words. Let your voice be heard. Let men go out of their ways to be a blessing to you. And let the sons of strangers stand and build your walls. I was sent to fight with you. So I take on the battle that you have been fighting. Let him go! I said let her go. Let her go. Let her go. So listen to me. The announcement I have to make is that there is a land that we need to buy. Here in Peter Marisburg. We need to build a building that can accommodate the people that are coming. As you can see, this place is small. If I'm not mistaken, there are people. Are there people outside? Oh. So there's a land we want to buy for the church. And I want to challenge you to make a contribution to that project. Um, the media guy, can you put the account details on the screen? And for those of you that are willing to participate in this because of this call, write down this account details. Right? From now to the next three months, you are going to experience a breakthrough. When you have that breakthrough, decide what you want to give to God. For, for if you decide now that, okay, I don't even have the money, but I want to make a contribution, take the number by faith. Then when you do that, God will now give you a breakthrough. Not in the normal sources of income that you get. I'm not counting that. It will come from God's source. Then you now decide when it comes. Okay, it came from God, and the reason why it came is because of this land. You decide what you will give God. If it's one percent, no problem. If it's a hundred percent, no problem. If it's twenty percent, no problem. You decide. Then I'll leave the story there. The story next year will com complete the story. So now, yes, yeah, just take the. You can snap it, you can copy it out. No, we will not use the envelopes today because 
I don't want them to give the money they have here. The one that they will give will come in a strange way. And it will happen from now till three months from today. Mm. Well, see, time is up. We have not finished, but time is up. So, to round up, anywhere you are seated, raise your hand and pray in the spirit. We pray for the land of Peter Marysburg and for the entire KZN. And the land will receive of you mercy drops and then great torrents of rain. Let the land be washed from every darkness, everything that bears the name of wickedness. Let it be washed out by the rivers of the spirit that will visit this land. I pray for the ministers of the gospel that are laboring here, Lord. Increase your capacity upon their lives. And let a mighty work begin in the land. Oh, thank you, Father. I bless everyone that traveled in from different countries. Everyone that came from different provinces. Go back with grace. Go back with grace. Go back with the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. The things that were difficult for you before, they'll be easy for you now. I want us to take this time and celebrate God. Just give him praise. We can do better than that. Give him the praise. Shout at your loudest possible voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And you all shouted, Amen. Can we celebrate the apostle? We want to pass our heartfelt gratitude to you, Apostle, for gracing us with your presence. The ministry of the word and everything that the Lord has done through you in this house and to everyone who is here visiting. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate Apostle again? Words are not sufficient to communicate what is in our hearts uh, because of what God has done. God has done so much. There is so much and you're going to begin seeing results. You're going to begin seeing results. The results will be louder. We bless God so much and I congratulate everyone in advance. Congratulations. Congratulations in the name of Jesus Christ. I do not want to close this opportunity for people who want to sow into apostles' life. This is coming from me. Anyone who says, I want to sow to the life of the apostle, this was his last night ministering here. I want to give you that opportunity. You can just bring your seat and lay it down here. You are saying, I don't want Apostle to go away without me sowing into his life. 
you have your own reasons and I don't want to motivate them as the spirit leads you you can just come and lay down your seat here Hallelujah. Praise God. Before we pray and close, I want to thank all the ministers of the gospel that came, all the pastors, those that traveled from afar, and those that came from nearby. Can we celebrate the men of God? Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. All our visitors, people that come from different nations, provinces, that travel to be here with us, we thank you. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's celebrate them. Maybe we can rise on our feet, Bazalwan. I believe we just keep watching our space. Uh, we'll be announcing when Apostle will be coming back again. Hallelujah. And I would love the protocol to escort Apostle to the office. Let's clap hands. Let's celebrate Apostle. And let's celebrate Apostle. Hallelujah. 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 To everyone who is here. May the Lord bless you indeed. Amen. Tell us, Vala and receive the blessing of the Lord. Lord, I stretch forth my hand towards your people and I pronounce a priestly blessing upon them. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord favor you. 
May he cause you to obtain favor with him and with men. May you walk with an open heaven above your head and an open door before you. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, you are blessed from today onwards in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are protected. Go in shalom. The Lord bless you all, Bazawan. You may be released.